Hi, welcome back to Robot Bobby's channel. That's me. I'm Robot Bobby. I'm going to talk about creating this shape here. This sort of geometric animated flower shape. And we're going to use JavaScript in a web browser with 3JS. Um, if you have questions about the exact setup, uh, check my channel for a setup video. I talk about the the configuration I have on my machine and how you can set it up too. But um, that's that. Why don't we get into creating this shape right here? Um, let's start from scratch. Actually, I'll just go over what I have here first. Okay, that's the kind of basic boilerplate setup. I'm going to do a bunch of stuff in here, which I'll talk about in a second. But then I call this animate function as I've, as, after I've written a bulk of the code. And that's going to be called as often as possible because of this API here, this request animation frame. It's going to call that as frequently as possible. The cool thing about that is if I change tabs or defocus the window or whatever, it stops calling it. So it's kind of efficient in that way. I think it's pretty cool. Lastly, I've got this piece of code here that's just to handle the event when I resize the browser window. That code gets called and it kind of re-centers everything in the window. Okay? Um, because of my setup, every time I save any modifications to this file I'm working on, the, the browser reloads, so I could change the hue, save it, and it'll reload automatically, and I'll see those changes. Okay. Great. Let's remove this code here and start from scratch. The first thing I'm going to do is to create a plane geometry. I could also create a circle geometry or whatever. Um, create a material, new three mesh basic material. And I'm going to pass a couple of options into that. Like my color, uh, we'll just make that red. That's all for now. And then I'll create a mesh. New three dot mesh and pass in <coughs> my geometry and my material. Add that to the scene. Scene dot add mesh. And what we should have is a very whoops, not ack add. We should have a single red square. Well, we're getting errors right now because I'm, I'm trying to reference something that doesn't exist at planes. So once I comment out that line, we see our square. That's, this is our starting point right here. <clears throat> Let's say I want to create a bunch of these. I'm going to create a code that up here. Say const planes is an empty array. And let's use a for loop for i equals 0. Well, i is less than num planes. i plus equals 1. Let me define num planes as const num planes equals some number of planes, 10. <clears throat> and instead of rewriting this sec block of code over and over again, why don't I create a helper function? Let's see, let plane equal or just let plane. And then we'll say plane equals get plane and planes dot push plane and scene dot add plane dot mesh. Let's create that get plane function now. I'm gonna leave the geometry declaration out of it because it's just the, it's not changing. We're gonna use the same geometry for, for each one. 
So here's my get plain function. Oh, it's not returning anything yet. Um, let's return the mesh in a, an object with a single property. I could write it like this too. The single property, which is mesh. And something's wrong. Let me just see before I check the console. Planes, planes, scene dot add plane dot mesh. That all looks good to me. Let's check the console. Why is it mad? Why is it erroring out? Oh, I is not de is not defined. Whoops, rookie mistake on my part. I need to say for let I. Okay, now we see a bunch of planes. You, you actually don't see a bunch of planes unless I gave them all a random color. <laughs> Let's say um, const color is equal to a new three dot color set HSL, the hue, saturation, and lightness, and we'll say math.random is the is the color, or it's the hue rather. The saturation will be one, the brightness will be 0 0.5, and then just pass that in. Still can't see them all. Let's set the scale. Um, mesh dot scale dot set scalar actually sorry multiply scalar multiply scalar and we'll give it uh, math no 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 I don't want to do math that random I actually do want to do math that random right now I'm not sure how many planes we'll see and for some reason my IntelliSense auto suggest put the wrong property there. Let's give this uh, some transparency so we can see through it. So transparent is true and opacity is 0 0.33. I didn't want to put an equal sign there. I wanted a colon. Okay, good. How's that looking? So now I can see more squares. Uh, just a randomly scaled each time. Instead of doing that random scaling, let's pass i into this get plane method. So now I have this property coming in, which I can use to scale. Um, <clears throat> each plane is one by one in size right now. Let's create a big one for the first one and make them get smaller and smaller for each, uh, each value of i I pass in. Let's define this scale, this const scale is equal to index. So that's going to start small and get big. Uh, and also it's going to get way bigger than the browser window. You don't believe me? Take a look at this. This is going to be a big field, right? Because the last, the final plane is much bigger than the browser window. Let's make it a little bit smaller, like um, one tenth as big. There you go. Although we're going from big to small, why don't we do one minus the index? So now we're going from small uh, the other way around. The first index that comes in is zero. Um, one minus zero times zero point one is one. The next time is two, or sorry, is one, two, three, four, up to ten. Ten times negative is is zero. I think the last plane will be zero. Does that give us, it's slightly bigger. I, I don't see much of a difference there. I'm gonna leave that off. I have a feeling that the last plane will be non-existent though. Um, yeah, let's add a little rotation. We're gonna, there are three axes of rotation in 3JS. Um, X, Y, and Z. We wanna rotate around the Z axis. So let's do mesh dot scale um, rotation dot z wow why is that auto suggest that doing that uh, math dot random because why not let's just do math dot random all the time I love how it looks <laughs> save it get a fresh version colors are random I kind of don't want that to be random anymore let's say 
that's the hue. Let's const hue is equal to index times 0 0.1. So now it'll be kind of a rainbow. <clears throat> Make this a little bit more transparent. And that random rotation is not doing anybody any favors. Um, these rotation is in radians, so it could be um, a, a full 360 is math dot pi times 2. That's just three, 360. Um, that's, you can't tell with a square. 0 0.5 would be 90 degrees. Oh, I mean, this is 45 degrees <laughs> or 90. I'm not sure. Um, if 360 is pi times 2, then 180 is pi times 1, then 90 is pi times 0 0.5. This is a 45 degree rotation. Um, why don't we say math.pi times index times 0 0.1? That's going to give me a value between 0 and 1. Or maybe it's a little bit too much. Let's shrink that a little bit and we get a nice a nice rotation. Um, let's reduce the hue variance a little bit too. Now they're all kind of uh, a similar hue, more similar hue. And we're already getting close. We just don't have an animation on this. Let's add an animation real quick. Um, we'll add an update function to this object that we're returning. Okay, not on date, but update. Okay. This is a no op at the moment. And then in our animate method, voila, we can call this thing. Um, it's not doing anything right now, but what if we told it to do this uh, mesh rotation, for example? Um, let's just say math, uh, rotation.z plus equals something, or equals plus. Now they'll all rotate together. Oof, that's way too much. Sorry. They're all rotating together. What if we gave them each an individual rate of rotation? Um, again, based on the index that comes in, index times 0 0.001. So now each rotation will be different depending on the number, the index value that was passed in. Oh, isn't that nice? So you're getting that, that cool effect increase the number of planes to 20. Um, that didn't look really good and that's because of the way we're scaling them. <clears throat> Where's the scale? Here it is. Let's make that twice as small. Oh my. Isn't that interesting? The hue is not what I want. In fact, let's just leave the hue all red all the time. And let's change the the lightness. To give that um, something. The lightness will be 0 0.5 to start with. Now they're all going to be very uniform. Right. <clears throat> but what if we gave it that same value we give to scale? Where uh, the first time through it'll be the, big, the biggest or brightest. And then as you proceed it gets darker and darker like so. I think that's really cool looking. And if we want to invert that, just take the one minus off. So now it goes from dark to light, large to small. In order to get that kind of um, undulating animation effect, even though this effect is really cool too, isn't it? It's a continuous rotation. Um, let's use a cosine function. Um, to do that, we need to pass a continuously updating value to the update method. That's this uh, t. When you call request animation frame and you give it this this handler uh, a parameter, um, it's going to pass a timestamp in. I could make that more clear. Or timestamp or time step. Um, okay, just to make it a little bit more clear. And I'm going to share that with my each plane's update method and say equals rate times 
let's see, t times rate. Let's see what happens then. Not much. It's a pretty small value, that time step. Let's increase that time step a lot. Pretty similar, right? What I want to do is get that undulating motion. To do that, I'm going to use math dot cosine. You can just go to Wikipedia or Wolfram to see what's going on here. Um, hang on. Let's take off the rate real quick. Oh my goodness. So sorry about that. Let's slow that down. So that's a little bit too slow. You can see it's going to kind of like a, like a pendulum swinging back and forth. Mm, that's super slow. Way too slow. Oh, I made in, I made rate super slow. Oh, it's too small. I think that needs to be inside the cosine method here like this. Still too small. There we go. And it'll it'll reach a certain point and then turn around and go back. Wow, that's different than what I showed at the beginning, but isn't that cool? I think I need like an offset. Like plus rate. That way we'll have them all moving. Oh, sorry. Hope no one is is uh, at risk of seizures. <laughs> that's my bad. Let's increase that rate a little bit. It's more of an offset now. Okay, there we go. Isn't that nice? I'm gonna rename this offset so that it's more clear. Cool, that's pretty much it. That's kind of um, a very simple, actually let's increase the opacity a little bit, make it look a little richer. Yeah, those those reds are popping a little bit more. That that's it in a nutshell. Um, I just created a bunch of planes and gave them each different properties depending on where they where they were in the stack. So I went from big down to small, and I went from dark to light, and then the speed of the animation goes from is offset to give that really beautiful kind of swirling effect. One real quick. Uh, if you change the plane geometry to a circle geometry um, and give this four, what, what circle geometry wants is a radius and a number of segments, it's going to look very similar. It's also a square, but now I can increase the number of sides and have pentagons swirling around or triangles swirling around. Isn't that cool? How about hexagons? If you get too large, it kind of you start to lose it, um, lose the beauty. Like for example, 20 sides, you kind of lose the rotation. I just think that's interesting that you can change the shape so easily. Another thing to play with is the color. Um, set the hue to one minus index times 0.2 get a blue oh that didn't work out 0 0.02 blue to purple type of thing isn't that pretty I just think that's really awesome all I'm doing is, is changing the hue in the same way that we change the scale and we change the rotation offset saying based on the, the, the where you are in the stack give me the color that corresponds to that I just think that's really cool looking play around with the saturation uh, turn it into a wireframe geometry uh, sorry wireframe material and that has a kind of a, whoops kind of a cool effect as well I don't know if you can see that it doesn't come across super clear in the video so yeah thanks for tuning in check back again leave your comments below if you have questions or requests uh, I love making these, and I, I'm so grateful for you guys as my audience. So see you soon. Thank you. Bye.